This is NMC Rough Cuts, presented by Bell. This podcast series is brought to you by the National Music Center. We're a registered charity that amplifies the love, sharing, and understanding of music from our home here at Studio Bell on Treaty 7 territory in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. I'm Graham Lassard, music producer and recording engineer at the National Music Center. Each episode of NMC Rough Cuts explores the songwriting and recording process of a compelling Canadian artist. Learn how an original song comes to life over a one-day recording session at Studio Bell and hear the story behind the tune. You can watch episodes at amplify.nmc.ca or listen anywhere you get your podcasts. If you enjoy the show, please take time to give a five-star rating and review. It really helps us out. Hi, I'm Graeme Lassard, and I'm here today at the National Music Centre uh, speaking with Pierre Sabourin, a singer and songwriter based in Calgary. Hey, Pierre. Hey there, Graham. For anyone watching this podcast, you'll have noticed we're set up in separate rooms. Uh, of course, that's so that we can take off our masks and be safe and comfortable and have a good chat. So, Pierre, over the last couple of, d- of days, we've been working on this song. It's a new song um, that you've written called Du Sœur Zégu. What's the song about? Well, uh, in a nutshell, a song, it's a it's a relationship song. Uh, it sounds like a pretty typical relationship song uh, or theme. Um, so it's a b- cheerful song all about well, everything that's going smoothly. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, not quite that kind of relationship. It's one that really that's, uh, that's coming to an end or that, a forced end. Uh, you know, it's really, you know, a forbidden friendship uh, or forbidden love. So... Uh, that in a nutshell kind of kind of uh, this is, is how I would describe that song so and, and this is a song that you co-wrote right with uh, Ronald Tremblay that's right that's right a longtime friend uh, Ron uh, he, uh, he yeah he he had these lyrics and he he needed music to it so he uh, he ran them by me and uh, I instantly loved the uh, the lyrics the I mean he has a way with words and the imagery that he uses in the song is just is it was very easy for me to uh to put music to the you know that type of uh that type of imagery and is that something that you normally do when you write a song do you, you normally uh take lyrics that are written and and write music to it or is this sort of a departure for you uh this is a this is one of the first actually typically okay. typically i write uh you know I'm a singer songwriter, so I do write the lyrics and the music. Uh, typically, um, most of the times, my the the music comes easiest to me, and then um, you know I write a I write a a song based on how that music makes me feel. Or that's kind of how that's kind of my my writing process anyway. And yet, you said it, that it was. Um, I think you said it was you found it easy to write music to these words because it was, you know, because you liked the words so much. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, uh, the, the poetry and like I said, the imagery really evoked, uh, a lot of, uh, inspiration for me. Uh, and it was really quite easy to write, write something to them. Yeah. Has, uh, has Ronald heard the track yet? Uh, not yet. No, not yet. I can't wait for him to, to hear it. Uh, yeah, that'll be a kind of a nice moment a little bit later on when we uh, hear the track. Then hopefully, uh, hopefully he feels like those images come through. But when you and I were talking about the song, even in you know the weeks leading up to this, um, despite not being a, a great French speaker myself, the the lyrics I talked to you about how much I liked these lyrics and how strong they were. Yeah, yeah, they 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 really are. Uh... It really is a great song. I think he's gonna be. I think he's gonna be pleased when he hears the the final product. And I also know one of his favorite instruments is is cello. So that'll be a, that'll come to, a, to him as a surprise. Ooh, a, a good one. Yeah, a bit of a sneak peek there for um, anyone listening to this that there's gonna be cello on the track. Well, that's cool. <laughs> Let's talk about the um, the process of of making this recording because there was a, a great cast of characters that came in and played on it. Right. I mean, you I think wrote the music on piano, but it didn't stop there yeah I mean I've I've uh, I feel quite fortunate to be able to, to surround myself with the group of uh, musicians that that accompanied me on this uh, amazing journey here at the at the center um, you know I'll start with with Robert Walsh who is a 
singer songwriter himself a producer he's a, a really accomplished musician based out of edmonton um it's uh he, he produced my first album uh back in 2000 hmm. so it was really fun to uh to get back together after after such a while and 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 watch him do what he does because he's he's fantastic and um and then uh, yeah jamie jamie cooper on drums uh who i've i don't have so much of a track record or as long a track record with him as i do with robert but we still have known each other for for a long time and i've known of you know his work and he's a he's a phenomenal drummer and uh Liviu pavel who uh, just recently moved here to calgary uh, and worked uh, worked with a lot of artists down in in the east end of the country in Ottawa, Montreal, mm -hmm. um, and is a very just just a, a very tasteful and lyrical bass player. So it's, it was really quite a pleasure to get to know him because this is the, really the first project I got to work with him on on this, and it was uh, it was a lot of fun working with him. Some old friends and then some new additions too. That's amazing. Yeah. And then of course our uh, incredible cellist Tessa, who I think was a recommendation to you from a friend, and that worked out beautifully. I think it was was actually her first um, recording session in a studio like this. So that was really kind of a treat to work with her this oh. morning too. Oh, it was such a treat. And I mean, having her play, yeah, having her play cello, it just brings so much. Uh, she's a she's a really talented uh, cellist, and um, it just adds so much to the song. I think it really really it really captures the essence of uh of the song the spirit of the song well in true uh podcast style we'll wait to the end to play the track <laughs> but um that's i mean it's so cool to hear about the musicians that you invited to play on this um but maybe you could tell me a little bit about yourself and how you got started in music yeah well it's uh a, a while ago really i got my start um it's a it's a songwriting contest that occurs every year in the French community um, here in Alberta, and it's the well back in my days it was called Gala de la Chanson, and now it's known as Polyphonic. Hmm. And uh, there's a lot of artists, uh, a lot of francophone artists here in Alberta that have gone through uh, through that uh, that songwriting contest. And uh, for me, that was really, really where it all began. Uh, and then, you know, from there, I just kind of made contacts and, and uh, my career grew from there. Uh, when, when we were talking earlier, you were saying that um, growing up in Alberta, a lot of the music you listened to was, you know, of course, on the radio, sung in English, um, but that you wanted to write in French uh, because it just sounded right to you. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm, uh, even though I'm a, I'm a fifth generation Franco Albertan, so I've been I've been here for so long, but we've uh, we've always been speaking French at home, mm -hmm. and uh, you know I went to a French school uh, growing up, so it was always a very important part of my life. Um, you know, uh, even though I leave the house and and everything's in English, and all the the music I listened to was 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 English music. Cause that's that's really what you hear out here. Um, it, it's funny when I when I started writing poetry, my best my best lyrics were always in French for whatever reason. And I tried writing in English, and it's it's just it just doesn't come out the the same way. So uh, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's just kind of how it. Uh, how how it happened but i'm you know i'm happily living in in calgary writing french music <laughs> <laughs> and and you also told me a cool story about how you took a break from music for a while when it just became too much yeah i did i did take a break um back in 2006 uh that was a, that was the last year i performed and uh i i just i just came to a point where writing music wasn't fun anymore uh I just wasn't getting that joy that I used to get from music. And I took a break and I started working in a forestry. I worked as a forest officer uh, for a while, um, which was an amazing gig. I mean, Kananaskis, we, we have, Alberta's got an amazing, uh, uh, an amazing topography, an amazing you know, forest to work in, in the Calgary area of all areas. I mean, we got the Rockies right on our doorstep. So it was a, it was a real pleasure working in that, in that area and getting to know that area. 
Um, but uh, you know, all the while, I wasn't I wasn't really involved in music. But um, music somehow finds a way to to find you if you're if if you're if you're under its under its spell. If I want to if I, if I sure. want to say it that way. Yeah. Um, and it came in the form of of my friend uh, Ron, who who tracked me down a couple of years ago, and invited me as a guest artist in the the show, the Putty Funnick show, right? Uh, to sing for the first time in a long time, you know, in in twelve years. And what was that like? Coming, I was coming terrified. back after a twelve year. Yeah, I imagine. Yeah, I was terrified. I had no idea what was going to come out of me, and and. Uh, it's pretty funny because he he's he can be quite convincing, Ron. When it, he calls me on the phone and he's like, "Yeah, just come sing one song and we're good," and you know, I, I okay, hang up the phone and I was like, "What did I just agree to?" You know, this is <laughs> <laughs> it was it was a I had a moment and uh, but going back uh, going back to that moment uh, is really a source of of uh inspiration even to even to this day because it was it was such an amazing experience and uh what happened um well i i got on stage and you know you after 12 years you wonder if people are still going to remember you or remember mm. you know your music um and i started singing my song and and you know you get to the chorus and and the crowd mm. starts singing with me wow and I was standing on stage going, I, I, I almost lost myself in the song, right? I, I just almost wanted to just turn the mic and let them sing the rest because the lyrics were <laughs> <laughs> nearly nearly leaving my mind. I, I, it, was a, it was a moment Incredible. and uh, it, was, uh, it was quite quite special. It was a special moment. And the next day just started writing again and finding it really brought the joy of music back in into my life and I've been I've been writing uh, quite a bit since then and uh, there's a whole bunch of new songs that are on the horizon now <laughs> you know obviously in the last couple of years with the pandemic a lot of people have been taking breaks from all kinds of stuff that they would have done you know and or taken for granted um, do you think it helped you to uh, have that inspiration back during the long months of 2020 and 2021 yeah it's it's certainly certainly didn't didn't hurt i mean i was you were looking for COVID projects and and uh what a better project than to go sit down in the studio and 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 work on music because you know there's not much else right. to do uh so it ended up being for me in a lot of ways a blessing in disguise yeah to uh, then to come here and record this song that um, you know you had co-written with uh, with Ronald, um, it's kind of a nice tribute to a friend that uh, dragged you kicking and screaming, you yeah, know, back onto onto the scene. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's and, and that's why why I chose this song in uh, you know in a lot of ways. It's a, it's a tribute to uh, to Ron for sure, and uh, it it means a lot to me. Uh, to be able to sing a, sing a song that we wrote together, yeah. You said earlier that when you write a song, you usually start with music and then the lyrics come after. In this case, the lyrics um, were the first and then music followed. Um, yeah. We're gonna play this track in a little bit and um, probably some people listening to this won't catch the meaning of the lyrics. W what do you say to those people? Well, I mean, I grew up listening to all sorts of music. Um, uh, you can take Gypsy Kings, for example. I, I still don't understand what they're singing, but I just love their music. Um, and uh, hopefully when people listen to the song that, you know, although they don't understand the lyrics, you you just take the song for what it is and, and enjoy how it makes you feel. And usually you have an idea of what's, the songs about even though you don't know what the lyrics are because uh, to some level I think I think music speaks to to you in a on another level it's such a good point you know when we're working in the studio uh, making a recording um, I don't always um, pay strict attention to the lyrics but at some point you always um, stop and think well the choices we're making with the music the recording here really has to support the story right mm -hmm. and so I think throughout the last couple of days that was kind of a theme for us was 
there was all kinds of cool ideas, but ultimately if they didn't um, sort of support the feeling of the lyrics, then they kind of got left on the on the shelf. Yeah, yeah, that's that's right. That's right. I think I think you you know musically when when the music is is uh, uh, portraying the words on the paper and you just feel it and even though you don't understand the lyrics right you, you just you just know what's right so uh it's uh music's uh pretty amazing that way and it's interesting how it um you can be one way in you know a lot of different facets of life and and then a totally have a totally different um way of approaching music i've been told that i'm a rather uh, analytical um left-brained kind of person but that's not how I engage with music and uh, maybe that's you know maybe that's why I like it yeah yeah I think I think uh, I, I don't know that you can you can make sense uh, as to why why you like certain songs or why certain songs you know make you feel a certain way right there's no there's no uh, not necessarily a a specific or logical reason for that right you just you just have to go with the flow and enjoy what it does yeah 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 and the fact that it unfolds in real time too you know it's not like um i mean you have all kinds of ideas and training in some cases that you come into the studio with but uh when you're collaborating with a group of people in a room it really uh is pretty spontaneous it it is it is i mean there's there's that element of surprise right and everybody how uh, everybody's going to perceive a song in a very in, in their way in their own way and that's that's how they interpret it and that's that's kind of part of the magic of of recording in a studio which oh was uh few and far between in the last two years during the covid uh covid you know this no was a, this yeah. was an absolute treat and to to be able to bounce ideas off each other and and watch this the the song and the puzzles kind of take shape and um that's part of the magic of recording in a place like this, that's for sure. Yeah, you know, I've talked to a few people about the challenges of, uh, you know, collaborating on the phone or on Zoom, and, and um, we always come back to the the fact that being in a room is, you can't even really compare it to those other scenarios with the uh, the way that things can unfold. Yeah, no, no, it just, it, just, uh, it, it can't be beat. Actually, uh, probably the most important part of of how the song is going to take shape is is before we play the first note right when we're all talking about it it's it's very uh yeah yeah that's a big piece that was missing you know and we spent plenty of time doing that before we actually recorded anything didn't we you kind of had everybody together around the piano working things out for a few hours and i know there was probably a moment that everybody had checking their watch and thinking like when are we going to record something? But like you said, that was pretty necessary. Well, it was, and I think I think it's the it's a case where where being patient at the beginning uh, just sped things up for the rest of the recording. It right. made it made uh, the other pieces really really fell into place, you know, rather quickly after that. So it was a it was an important uh, meeting of the minds, <laughs> and it was fun too. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I guess that's part of the reason it took so long. But yeah, no, I yeah. think that, I think that it like what followed came quickly after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It really it, it helped guide the process. That's for sure. It's been amazing to work with you, Pierre. Thanks so much, and thanks for uh, the chat too. It's great to hear. I mean, I I really hope that you know some of those feelings come through in the song that we're about to play for people. Do you want to tee it up for them? Sure. Um. Sorry. Uh, mm-hmm. No, no. I'll I'll do that again. I'll throw it to you, and you can maybe just say uh, introduce the song and. I oh, think okay. Just kind of the the title and. And anything else you want to say anything before else? you? All before right. Before we, you know, launch people on a four minute journey. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Okay. I'll yeah. I'll take that one again then. Pierre, it's been a real pleasure speaking with you today, and a real pleasure working with you and the rest of the musicians on this song. I'm really excited for people to hear it. Do you want to set it up and uh, then we'll play the track? I'd be more than happy to, but uh, before I before I, I tee the song up, uh, I just want to say a big thank you to you, Graham, and, and uh, the 
just the entire team here at the uh, National Music Center. It was a real pleasure working with everybody. I had a ton of fun. Thank you. <laughs> um, without further ado, I am so proud to present to you my first song recorded here at the NMC called Douceurs Aigus. If you'd like to support music in Canada, please consider making a donation to the National Music Center at studiobell.ca slash donate. NMC is a non-profit, non-governmental, charitable organization. We amplify the love, sharing, and understanding of music, and we rely on donor support to create content online and in person in our exhibitions and performance spaces at Studio Bell. Thanks. Now stay tuned for some music. Pas de mots. Plus de mots pour dire ce que tu vaux. Pourquoi pas de chance? Tu as choisi. N'a pas de sens, je crois. Nous vivons des nuits qui appartiennent à d'autres. Mille douceurs.
If you like this show, you can check out more of the National Music Centre experience online by visiting amplify.nmc.ca. You'll find online performances, articles about Canadian music history, educational videos that connect science to sound, and much more. I'm Graham Lassard. Thanks to our guest today, and thank you for tuning in.